also like to thank everybody for coming out on this night to uh, and taking the interest. Uh, I'm real sorry we didn't plan this many people to be here tonight, but we had to have the chair set up. But I really appreciate you coming out tonight to take interest in, in, uh, in what we're doing. I get to talk about the good things. And then I'm going to pass over to uh, in, in the bill, and I'm going to talk about what we're going to do, and then I'm going to pass over to Ron, and Ron's going to talk about how we're going to do that and, and what the traffic plan is going to look like. And then we're at, at the end of the night, we're going to open it up, open it up for any questions. And, uh, and so please don't leave tonight with a question. Hopefully we can get to everybody here and get the questions uh, or the time allotment quits. We'll, we'll hang around here and answer questions, and, and hopefully everybody will leave satisfied with the answers that they get. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, is, is safety. And, and being construction and being, the, being on the alignment, I'm aware of the traffic issues that we're faced with, and I'm aware of what happens. And, 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 and it really hit home for me this past week because I had one of my flagmen that was flagging, and he was standing out, and he had his lollipop up that says stop. And the car didn't stop. And unfortunately, we had to take him, emergency services had to get him and, and take him on, and he had to receive medical care in order to come back. So I'm real concerned with the safety. I'm equally or more concerned with the public safety. And so we're, we're, we are doing what we can, and, and we want to be good neighbors, and we want to do what we can to make things more palatable and, and make things uh, safe, safe for the people that are here. I've got a few notes, and I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss a few things, but uh, I'll, I'll try to get, get through this, and get through this part as quick as I can. As you can see, the 19 kilometers of, of what we're doing, we've got 19 kilometer route separated from river traffic. 10 kilometers are underground. Nine kilometers are on the surface. Nine kilometers on the surface. We're here to talk about Leslie tonight, and we're talk about what we're doing on the surface. And I hope that you leave here excited about what's going on. If you come by a pharmacy here lately, you've seen rail being installed. And, and that wasn't planned to happen until much later. We moved it forward. We're going to try to complete everything we can complete on the overground and get as much as we can completed this year before the weather turns bad towards the end of this year. We've got 15 underground stations. And, and I've had a lot of questions. I didn't bring very, very many pictures of the underground uh, stations, but I've had a lot of questions here tonight about the underground stations. People say that they're driving down Edlington and they don't see anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're, they're underground. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but I can tell you, if you were to go underground, what you'd see is, in, in some cases, you'd be, see 30 meter holes and you'd see where we were starting to build back up. You'd also see stations such as Killsdale that are pouring the final roof, and then we will be backfilling Killsdale, and that opens up our test track. So what you would see is you'd see that we are on schedule, and we're on schedule to complete this on the 29th day of September 2021. We've got a maintenance facility that's in now. I also had a lot of questions earlier tonight about the maintenance facility. Are you going to have the vehicles to test? Our contract said we would have six vehicles here at this time. We've got six vehicles. We've got six vehicles in that maintenance facility, and we're ready to test. And, and so things are things are happening as they're supposed to. There, there are problems. There, my job to make problems less, and there, there's always going to be some of those. But we're on we're on, on target. Uh, transit communication system. It links to 54 bus routes, three subway stations, Go, and the Up Express. We go to the next page. This really gets me excited when I start looking at that, and that's the that's the lineup. That's what you're going to see. And what you what you see at pharmacy right now is the guideway. That's this section right here, where the train sits, and you see the track being installed at the top there going on that right now. We'll come back and we will the OCS. That's the area on the top. That's how we'll power the trains. That area right there will be done later this year. It'll be done in, in, in the May time frame when we get the OCS equipment in. And then you see the two lanes on either side, and then you got a dedicated bike lane followed with, with a passenger, with a crosswalk in, or pedestrian. What's OCS? Overhead, it, it, 
overhead line equipment. And OCS is, is the is the power. Is, is this stuff right here is the power for the for the train? Sorry about that. It stands for overhead catenary system. All oh, right, catenary, right? Okay. Okay. One thing I didn't say at the very start of this, I knew I'd leave some off. But we've got staff here from TTC. We've got staff here from Metrolinx. We've got a lot of staff around the, around here tonight. So any questions that we can't answer? Somebody in this room can answer, and so don't don't leave with any anything. If you look at the if you look at the oh we already we already moved over. All right, major work be, court, be occurring at Leslie through 2019. Uh, major work and, and what we what we've got to do is this isn't Bathurst, and, and it's it's nothing like what we what we were proposing to do at Bathurst. Bathurst, we were looking to make a scheduled game by doing some things different. And this this is not Bathurst. This is how the Leslie was always going to be done. It's, it's written in our contract that way. And so this is this is what the plan was from the start. That's what we're that's what we're enacting with Leslie. So. When you get into the questions, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. The guideway, this is how the guideway is constructed. We come down and, and we dig it out and then we've got to come back up with fill. And then we put our ducking in. And then we put a top top layer on, covered up our, our, our ducking. And then we cover it up and then the very top, the rail is embedded rail, it's embedded into the concrete. And that, that's what's being installed now. The next, the next slide is going to talk about what our schedule is. And if you went around, you probably had a few questions about this. The things that I'd like to point out about this is there's no two adjacent intersections blocked at any one time. And so when you're out here, the detours are, are minimal. They're, they're one, one area and one area only. I know there's been a lot of questions about, about uh, time frames and the time frames that we said we would do things and the time frames that we have listed up here. And what, what have we done to minimize that effect and guarantee we're going to meet these time frames? We put a lot more staff on that. And if you're, out, if you're out working right now, we're going through every aspect of the plan, even to the point that I want to turn it into an all-weather all plan. We're looking at putting up some portable tents to keep any weather out. So as the rainy season starts, we can keep that out and we can continue our assembly line and remain on plan or ahead of plan. We're not going to go back to behind plan. We're going to on our on our ahead. Ron, I'm going to turn it over to Ron, uh, my colleague right here, and he's going to take you through the traffic management plan. He's going to take you through uh, a, a little bit of that, and then we'll open it up for any questions and answers. Thank you. So uh, we wanted to provide a little bit of context before I start talking about the details of the last system. So uh, as Steve said, uh, this is the big year for the after eight section from the portal west of Leslie all the way over to Kansas Station. And this is where the effort has to be put in to uh, put in this concrete guideway and the track and then give the intersection and have the intersection pretty close to final condition. And in order to do that, some of the some of the timelines. If you look at this, these are the uh, the stations that from the top is Leslie moving further east to Iron View, and then we have a calendar that goes January to December, and then the bars show you the duration of the different activities and what's going on. So, for example, uh, there's work that's just been finished in Credit Union Swift to return it back to normal. Vermonty Sloan is to start shortly, and in order to do everything at the intersection of Vermonty Sloan, you can see paving on the south side six weeks, paving on the north side six weeks, and then the guideway six weeks. So that's 18 weeks in total to give some comparison to what we're talking about at Leslie Station. And then you'll see uh, there's a staggering of things, as Steve said, so that no two intersections are being done at the same time. So when you're working on Bermondsey Sloan, Credit Union Swift is open, Victoria Park is open. The guideway is just being finished off in Eglinton Square. You start working on pharmacy. When you're working on pharmacy, the park is open and Warden is open. Okay? And, and so that type of approach 
follows all the way down, and you're working on birch mount. Warden isn't affected, and Kennedy isn't affected. So that's one of the principles to make sure that on each side of it, there are alternate routes in order to do it. But this, and this is all to happen through the course of 2019. So this is being distributed six weeks, 12 weeks, 18 weeks. These are the time frames that are being dealt with across the entire corridor. If we go to the next slide. So before we start talking about managing traffic and movement during construction, I wanted to just at least give you an idea of what's being built up. Now, Steve already showed the previous slide. This isn't come along, put some paving down, put a steamroller across it, and you're done, and slap some pavement markings, and you're good. You gotta do this big, deep trench, get right down to the guideway. They've gotta put in all the communication. They've gotta put in concrete. They gotta put the track in the concrete all the way through. They also have to do with the entire reconstruction of all this area and get ready for the station and everything. So this is no small job. Why can't you do it on a couple weekends? Right? There's a lot going on here. You've got grades, you've got other things going on that are part of this. Just to give you some fun. We'll go to the next slide. So, what is Crosslinks doing right now? Crosslinks is currently seeking city permits. We have to get city permits for the temporary eight week restriction of vehicles traveling between Leslie and Eglinton Avenue. And we're going to go into much more detail about that. As I said, this allows for the LRT guideway construction and the track installation. Eggleton Avenue will be remain open in both directions at all times. Back and forth, east, west, and Eggleton, all the time we'll be able to do that. Buses will be able to go back and forth on Eggleton all the time. Cyclists will be able to go back and forth. Okay? Leslie Street will otherwise function normally north of Eggleton. I'll go into some more details. In preparation for that, the work that's going on at the other intersection. Traffic lanes will be opened up and turn restrictions lifted at Bayview and Eglinton and at Donnells and Eglinton before this Leslie work starts. And I'll show you what that is. I know you're just going to applaud. You're going to, people want to keep uh, at the parking lot uh, at Bayview and uh, Eglinton. Because I know it's been tough, but I know Donnells and Eglinton has been interesting at times. And the proposal is to do this during the lowest traffic volume months of the year, July and August. And that's not by accident, that's on purpose, okay? Next slide. So, emergency services access to and from Edmonton Avenue is contained at all times. We have a transportation management committee that meets every two weeks, everybody's represented, every single plan is cleared with police, paramedics, and fire to make sure that they can still perform their job and service the community. <coughs> we'll take questions after the day. Well, if they do that, we may say that, but I know of two people specifically that were trying to get to Sunnybrook in ambulances where their ambulance workers were telling them, we can't take you to that hospital because there's too much traffic. Okay. And that's considering there are ambulances, so maybe that needs to go down. Okay. Pedestrian and cyclist access between Leslie Street and Eglinton Avenue will be maintained throughout the closure. And the entry to Sunnybrook Park off of Leslie Street north of Eglinton Avenue is outside the work zone and will be open at all times. Okay? Next slide, please. So this is a, 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 a simple schematic of what the traffic layout would be. Okay? So the hatched area, the yellow and black hatched area, is where construction needs to occur. If we take a look at the vehicle traffic, this shows one lane in each direction on Eglinton Avenue. One lane each direction on Eglinton Avenue. Okay? The, the, the traffic, sorry, the, the TTC stops, the temporary stops would be here and here. There would be a, the green represents the ability to walk through on the sidewalks to get through the area, including a, a connection to that temporary TTC stop. There would be a signalized intersection here, a pedestrian signal here. So the only time that traffic would be stopped on Eglinton Avenue is if the pedestrian pushes the button and the, and the lights change because the pedestrian is going back and forth across the street. The rest of the time, it's green for traffic on Eglinton Avenue. 
So this provides stability for pedestrians. It also means because of this open area, cyclists will be able to go across Angleton Avenue at this point. So there is the connection for cyclists. At Leslie Street, we show at the top the Sunnybrook Park driveway, and we show just south of there, near the last driveway, is where there would be the public vehicle turnaround facility if somebody is, is somehow confused, misses all the signage, and, this, and determines that you can't get through to Eggleton. This is where they'd be able to make a turnaround facility. Uh, at this point, no other traffic in the area, except for buses. The buses will be performing a, a loop with, a, with an area for the, for the transit passengers, so the transit passengers will be able to connect from here down to the east-west Eggleton Avenue routes. Okay? Next slide, please. So, Bayview and Eggleton, as we said, it will be done, it will be in much better uh, condition before this closure would occur. And what does that mean? It would mean that you can make left turns in all four directions, which you can't make right now, okay? You'll have two lanes eastbound, one lane westbound plus a left, two lanes southbound, one lane northbound. So this is be a significant improvement to what's going on there right now in terms of the, the ability to make turning moves. There will be some construction going on, but there'll be uh, much more flexibility in terms of that intersection operation. Next slide. Don Mills and Eggleton Intersection. So, mid-May 2019, <coughs> it's projected to be that you will have all lanes open on Eggleton, sorry, on Don Mills, or on Don Mills, including the left turn lanes, eastbound, two through lanes on the left, westbound, three lanes westbound, so this intersection will be a lot easier to maneuver than it is right now. Because I know we know it's challenging right now. So again, that provides alternate routes at the adjacent arterial roads. Next slide, please. So again, this is just the same type of chart that we showed you previously that shows that at the beginning of July, Leslie, Bayview Station, and Bayview uh, Leaside Station, all turns open. Don Mills, Science Center Station, mid-May, all turns open, and this would be the point at which we would propose to do the eight weeks, and then, when it's done, in time for the fall, the school, back to school, the fall, <coughs> all turns open. <coughs> get in there, get it done, all turns open. Next slide, please. So, people might say, well, is that the only alternative? Why not just uh, do some kind of construction management, staging, and do it in pieces? Well, here's the implications. Keeping the intersection open for all traffic and transit would require carrying out the, the work in a minimum of four stages, resulting in extension of the construction time from two months to six months, including all through the fall, right through to the end of the year. At least four major changes in how traffic gets through the area. Each stage of the construction would be disrupted while there'd be the switch over to the new stage. It would still, it would require additional off-peak lane closures and intermediate traffic setups with associated restrictions required during the day in order to do the work, as opposed to get in, lock it off, and get it done. And, and when it's all done, there would be a reduced quality of road when the work is completed because you putting in a whole number of joints in order to connect the asphalt, the concrete, and the track, etc., with uh, higher future maintenance costs and future road work required earlier and more frequently versus getting it done. Next slide. So, prior to the closure, what's been done, what will be done? A comprehensive advertising campaign will be launched. Canvas is scheduled for residents and businesses in the immediate area. Advanced signage. You've seen those portable variable message signs that they'll be up at York Mills and Leslie, Don Mills and Lawrence, Baby and Eggleton, Laird and Eggleton, and Don Mills and Eggleton. Uh, local traffic only signs installed at Lawrence and Leslie uh, for traffic that might be headed south. Additional construction grade signage placed at key locations east and west of Leslie on Eggleton Avenue. 
north of Eggleton at Lawrence and, and York Mills and south of Eggleton. TTC would provide advanced information to all the impacted transit riders. The 24-7 Crosstown Call Center is available to provide information and respond to issues. And during the closure, Crosslinks would continually monitor the situation and make adjustments as required. Next slide. TTC detours. The TTC has gone through all of their, their different routes and, I, and identified what the rerouting would be so that they could still provide service. We have people here from TTC if you want to talk about specific routes and that type of thing. One of the fundamental things that, that people should be aware of is we have where transit passengers would have to get off at the bottom of Leslie and go down to Eggleton to get on the, uh, the, the bus routes. Well, when the whole system is complete and the Crosstown LRT is in place, that is exactly the type of transfer that transit passengers will need to make. They will get off at the bottom of Leslie and they will get on the LRT at Eggleton. Okay? So that, that will be the ultimate. This is about trying to find the best way of managing things through the eight weeks of construction. Next. Communications and engagement, on-street activations and info booths leading up to the event. We've identified a whole number of locations, and this applies across the entire Act 3. Um, we've done a number of these different town halls because we've been out further east of here to explain because uh, there's, there's closures for a number of weeks that are going to be occurring in a number of the major intersections we showed you over the course of the summer into the fall. But the, the, the good news at the end of it is that these intersections have got to be done and the majority of the construction will be done and the intersections will be very close to the final condition. Disruption and distribution of construction notices and wayfinding postcards to businesses and residents. The open house, we're having it now. That was, that was the projected date at the time. Advertising, radio, print, digital, and TTC locations, digital, social media, Metrolinks, and TTC websites, and as we said, advanced signage informing road users of the status of the intersections upstream of, of Eglin. Next slide, please. There's also a whole business support program uh, for businesses. Uh, we do have some businesses in the area. We don't have them right adjacent to the intersection like, like there are at other locations. There are some, but not to the, the density that there are at other locations. And, and working with all of the businesses to make clear it's open for business and help them work through this while we're doing the construction. Next slide, please. Um, the community benefits slide in terms of the number of uh, jobs that are created through the course of this project uh, is another community benefit. And next slide, please. And then how do you stay in touch? Well, there's all sorts of ways to stay in touch. There's an app. You can sign up for it. You can go to the web. You can go to Facebook. You can go to Twitter. You can go to Instagram. You can talk to your neighbor. You can go to the the, the, the different the Crosstown East office, which is at Eglinton Avenue and Bayview, if you want more information of what's going on and the status of things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Next, please. Okay. At this point, we're going to open up for questions. One thing before we start the questions, and I'd like to recognize that uh, also Councillor Jay Robinson. Uh, he was has, has, has also. Okay, so we'll try and take questions one at a time, and we'll try and get a microphone out there as well. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. It's supporting what we want to do. I just. I'm southbound Leslie at Lawrence right now as you reach back up for left turns going on to Lawrence. When you cross, close that south end off, that's going to get worse. It's blocking all the streets you're trying in. Can the city put a double left turn or something in for the duration of this thing uh, so that we don't have people coming out of the side street can't even get out of Leslie right now? So, so we'll, we'll be doing, okay, so we'll be doing a traffic plan that includes looking at the traffic signal timing at locations. And one of the things that may make it easier for southbound left turning traffic is that you won't have traffic coming from Eglinton North on Leslie towards Lawrence, which you have to compete with uh, in order to get gaps in order to make the left turn. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just an ask about traffic at Post Road 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 So 
we'll, so we'll be doing, uh, working with City of Toronto Transportation Operations staff to come up with signal timing plans and adjustments for all the affected intersections in the area. And, and, and once it's done, taking it, doing a follow-up to see whether or not it's, it's achieving what we want, and if there's adjustments that need to be made, adjustments need to be made. One of the comments I'll make is that virtually every time that you make a significant change in things, for the first several days, things don't go well until people get a better handle of things. Like, I'll tell you, one of the things is, everybody always wonders the day after Labor Day, where did all this traffic come from, right? <laughs> it's one of the worst days of the year. You say, where did, where did everybody come from? And so similarly, when you make adjustments to like this, that where you have a significant closure, you, you, you take your best, you, you do some analysis, you implement some timings, and then you adjust as you see how traffic is flowing. So I'm, I'm just gonna go off, the microphone is being moved around the room. Over here. Well, oh, sorry, okay. Sorry, I'm not, I don't normally do this. This is my day job, but I'm not I have a question for the PTC. So uh, the suggestion I have is, you see these TTC people that are here, after we do the formal part of the meeting, please go up with, to them and, and you can more specifically talk about no, yes. the, the stops. I, I, and I'm that mentioning group. this because there are a lot of TTC riders, because sure. I don't drive. Okay, no, I just, so I just want to, if you want to talk in a bit more detail, you can, you can talk to them directly. I will, your, after. Your concern. I great, will. thank you. That's great. Where's the, well, thank you, yes. I'd like to encourage you to do a better job with your advanced signage. 
best of my knowledge, there's never been a warning on Eglinton going east before Leslie Street. There's no turn at Don Mills Road, which means no one, a uh, driver that doesn't know the area is going uh, east. They get to Eglinton, to Don Mills Road, want to turn left? No. Nope. Go over to Vic Park, come back? Not good. Put your local traffic only signs on Leslie north of Lawrence. Yes, no, they, they, they would be north of Lawrence, yes. That would be new and unusual. The actual thing to drive in the Hello? Hello. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, once the dust is all settled and you've got streetcars running on that route, how is it going to affect the bus routes that exist now? The, the TTC is uh, currently undertaking a five-year service plan and a ten-year transit outlook. Uh, over the course of this year, we will be doing transit workshops throughout the city of Toronto, uh, mostly in, in June and July. Uh, as part of that plan, we will be uh, doing a redesign of uh, all connecting surface routes that connect to the Edmonton Crosstown. So that is part of the five-year plan. Uh, there, there will be some changes, and we'll be consulting with the public to discuss those changes. Yes. Um, I live in Northeast Side, and we've already got a lot of problems with cars coming through, not stopping, and so forth. Um, is there any plan to? I can see that people heading west are going to want to go up, go through Northeast Side, and go up to Bay that way. Um, or is there going to be any, like, a local traffic only signs for us, or anything to help keep our kids safe this summer? So, so as, I, as I said earlier, the key to this plan is for the intersection of Bayview and Eggleton to be in better shape with the ability to make turns and more lanes prior to this occurring. So making the arterial roads uh, move better is one way of dealing with this issue. In terms of uh, dealing with local traffic restrictions, that becomes a, a very community-based type of uh, um, issue where it's not for us to impose or implement them. Uh, we certainly are prepared to listen if the communities deal with their counselor and propose uh, specific approaches to things. But our effort is to make sure that the arterial intersections are in a position to handle more traffic than they have been while the construction's been going on at the intersection. So, counselor, you are here, so. <laughs> just the second thing is, Bayview is terrible road-wise. Are you going to do anything to repair roads of Don Mills and, um, or will any the city department do anything to fix some of the uh, roads that will help us want to go there? I mean, we've got no choice, but right now they're pretty bad. So we're dealing with the, the intersection specifically as part of our construction. If there's discussion about Bayview Avenue beyond the intersection, yes, that would be the responsibility of transportation services. Back there? Yes. Hi. With regard to the uh, transit buses, I'd like to have a suggestion that the 54 Lawrence bus go to Lawrence Station because then you don't have to come down. Increase the Leslie bus on, on an express route going, make the increase the frequency and let people know that the 88 bus that does go through B-side, that should be increased as well during the construction. The other thing that I'd 
instruction and policies that don't understand
You presented. Oh, the doctor. Uh, yes, thank as you. As I understand it, you presented two options tonight. So one option is shut the intersection down for two months. <laughs> no, not option. not shut the intersection down. Shut down Leslie Street. Correct. The connection for vehicular traffic from Leslie to Edmonton. Okay. I'll qualify that by saying I drive every day. So okay. I'd like some of the people that are on Grand Club of Transit. Uh, I do drive every day to get downtown from the area, uh, from North there. So if Leslie Street is shut down at that point for two months to finish the construction off, my other option is if you don't shut it down completely, uh, it will take six months to finish the construction in that particular area. Is that right? Yes. Correct. So those are the two options that we were presenting. So what I was wondering is why is there not possibly a third option of you congregate all of your construction and mobilize more of your people into that particular area so that you can get the work done within a couple of months and still keep that particular intersection open. Now, maybe I'm the only person here that drives, but it's extremely inconvenient every day to drive from the York Mills area to get downtown to the Yorkville area or wherever downtown. So can you not mobilize your construction groups from Avenue Road, Edmonton, maybe finish up there for a little while so those businesses can move on, so that perhaps we can keep the intersection open. Right. So, so as as you saw with a couple, I you saw a couple of the slides. You're building a very, doing a very deep trench in order to build this. You're putting piping in. You're putting in concrete. Concrete needs time to cure. You can't make it cure any faster. You have to put the track in, so there's a certain amount of time and an amount of time and effort where putting more people on it isn't going to make it go any faster. And you can't drive across it while you're doing it. I won't keep asking questions because we will go in a circle, but the options seem to be two months or six months, and I'm sorry, but I don't see that that answers the question that I asked about curing of concrete, uh, that that would not allow the construction to get done in a two-month time frame. So, yeah, as far as the six month month option, uh, we haven't talked about a six month option. Right. And, uh, yeah, maybe we, we we've looked at it. We've looked at it, and, and the delays when we when we put in the track, and we put in the overhead line, the del we would have to shut the intersection down anyway during during those times. And so, whether if we took it for six months, we would still be taking an extended period of time. On, on, the, on the block. So we're here for you to tell us you are shutting it down for two months, yeah. not to That's engage to see what the audience is. Is that correct? Right? 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 Is that correct? Right? 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 It seems to be what the audience is. So that, that is the plan that, the, that, that is in the contract that, the, that Crosslinks has submitted to the city for permits and work is presenting the whole plan in order to manage that for the eight weeks during the summer. So does everybody here want to see the intersection shut down for a couple of months? No. 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 Okay. So. Next, yes. Uh, Michael Mom, Bob um, So as we saw in the last few months, when you're driving through that Eglinton area, either in Leslie, Bayview, or Don Mills, there could be lane changes overnight. And that is very dangerous without advance notice, right? So you should put uh, alternate routes uh, anytime you're making a change, at least one week advance notice so that people can anticipate there will be a change on Monday morning. Because that's very dangerous for people coming through all of a sudden there was a lane and now there's no lane. Um, and secondly is what we observe is a lot of, a lot of potholes started to create during construction and a lot of these metal plates on top that makes the service unneeded. And so it's very dangerous for cars, for people with wheelchairs or bicycles, uh, and, and, and especially in, in rainy days. Uh, you know, in this case, it's, it's not going to be snowing season, but it's very dangerous especially when you add mud on top of it. It's very slippery. So what I'm asking is every night you should send a, a, a maintenance crew, go through there and fix some of these minor 
uh, issue so that we avoid accidents so, so across so, from our neighbors. So Crosslinks is in the process of doing that. As everybody knows, this has been a very harsh winter. It's been a harsh winter on all the roads, and, and, and road authorities all across southern Ontario are dealing with that. But I know that Crosslinks is doing that. With respect to your comment about lane shifts and changes and people getting used to things, that in fact is one of the reasons why it's proposed to do it in this fashion. It will be that way for eight weeks. All right? No, not lane shifts. Can you make a turn one day? Can you not make it the next day? This would be it. Eight weeks in the summer. Get in. Get it done. Have it done before school returns in the fall. That's the that's the approach. Yes, back. Uh, I'm not sure if I heard this correctly, but uh, like the gentleman at the back, I have to do a lot of driving as well. I live in Victoria Village, which is just off Sloan. And did I hear correctly that um, Sloan and Bermondsey will be closed for 18 weeks? The way, the way Sloan and Bermondsey will look is it'll be like two T intersections. So you'll be able to, from the north, you'll be able to turn on and off Eggleton to the north, and you'll be able to turn off and on of Eggleton from the south side. But what you won't be able to do is you won't be able to drive completely across Eggleton. You won't be able to make left turns onto those side streets or left turns off of it. They'll operate as two T intersections. However, Credit Union and Swift will be, will be open for full movements uh, adjacent. Uh, to that to that area, so that's part of the traffic management strategy. Okay. Yes. Hi. I I live at the Les, Leslie Lawrence area, just north of Edwards Gardens, and presently we have gridlock there continuously due to the the, the traffic trying to get away from Eglinton. I'm sure a lot of people are quite aware of it. What, what, what are you saying? Well, we're not. We're only worried about the arterial. Well, with with Lawrence being the last main intersection before the shutdown, what? Are, how are you going to control? How, it's going to get supposedly it'll get to be impossible because they're going to want to make a right right turn and go to Bayview and. Uh, uh, you know, when they had the water main break there, it was one hour going from uh, from uh, uh, from the Leslie intersection to, to Bayview. So, so the approach is to make sure that Don Mills is a better route than it has been because it has been a it's, it's been a challenging intersection, it's challenging right now, and to have Bayview as a better location, and to have more advanced so uh, notice so that people are in anticipation planning to change the route. Again, during the summer, there's more people that take vacation, there's more people that can adjust their trips, there's, there isn't people taking people to school and that type of thing. So, so from that point of view, the background traffic shouldn't be as much as it is during the regular part of the year. Regardless, there's going to be congestion. Yeah, I know, but with, with the fact that your last main intersection before the total shutdown is Lawrence, how are you going to control, especially when you've got Lawrence being a two-lane road weaving through the, the bridle path and all through there, and it gets all backed up? How are you yeah. going to how are you going to control that? I mean, I'm not living in quite in that. I'm living just slightly north of it. But if you're trying to get out, it's it's a totally impossible. You're saying that hey, we're not worried about that. That's other people's responsibility. No, I didn't say we aren't worried about it. I'm saying we have control over the operation of the intersections where we are doing our construction. We can put together a transportation management plan, but we, as crosslinks, can't go into a local community and start putting in no right turn, no left turns, well, like yeah, on our own. You should be able to uh, at least coordinate it with the local municipal personnel. Well, we are, so all of this is being reviewed and done in conjunction with the City of Toronto Transportation Services Department. Okay, right. because really right now, it, the, 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 the traffic is diverse 
going through there because it's trying to avoid the Eglinton traffic. But, but it's also doing that because of Bayview, and it's doing that because of Don Mills. What we are saying will be in a better position to handle some of that traffic that has shifted while this is going on. Okay, yes, in the back? I have this question here, as you can see. If I understand correctly, the large bus is going to come down, Don Mills is going to come down by Yes. I wonder why. Because really, the Leslie Street bus will turn around. So, because we on Leslie there, so for the more, uh, south of Orange, right? Down the road, one third of the service we already have. Is there any reason why Orange should be done on the Leslie Street bus? Because they're going to go to nothing. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so I think the question was. Well, that's why they're going to come down the road. Thank you and good luck.
mutual? At the very bottom, the one lane each way. Yes, it's one lane in each direction, but at what point does, it, does the cross section it's change? It's the existing as right now. So it'll be the same as it is uh, current? Yes. So all the way to Brentcliffe, pretty well? Yes. Okay, and then east? Okay, so, okay. Okay, my, my second concern is that um, small kind of walkway. Is there going to be stoplights there? Um, and because it doesn't really look like a regular intersection. So this? Yes. Well, yes. This will be this will be a, uh, this will be signalized. This will okay. be a pedestrian signal. Okay. So and and so uh, and in fact, if you look at it, really the crossing distance where you are crossing traffic is this piece at the bottom. Because, because this will be the, the, the construction area. So you're walking this whole way, but as far as where you need to stop traffic with the traffic lights in order to cross, is to cross these two lanes of, of, of traffic. Where will the 54 bus be? So there's the one stop there. And this, this is not to scale. This is, a, this is a diagram so that people can understand. So this is, this is for the westbound stop, and the eastbound stop is over here. <laughs> uh, can I just ask a question? Where where are you traveling to? If you're taking a bus from Eglinton to Leslie Street. Having to transfer from from Eglinton to get the 54 bus to go north and along Lawrence, where do you get them? So if you are traveling along Lawrence, east of Don Mills, you can I'm stay. I'm talking Eglinton. taking a bus along Eglinton. I presume that will still run in the summer. Yes. You get off at Leslie Street in order to go north. Where do you get the 54 bus? So the 54 bus, like I said, there were three branches. Two of the branches would serve this stop here. That's at the bus loop. And then there would be one branch that does, that continues on exit tip and goes up Don Mills yeah, to Don Mills and Lawrence. Yeah, I'm not concerned about the one going east. I'm concerned about the one going north. Okay. And how far does a person have to walk to get there? So we're, we're estimating if you are transferring from the eastbound to the northbound movement, it would be a uh, approximate four minute walk. Right here. That's a four minute walk. That's our guess right now. And if you're coming from a uh, southbound to westbound movement, that's a two minute walk. Yeah, average three per turn. What about the 61 Omnibus? Would that be increased after being at least 15 minutes instead of half an hour? The 162? Okay. So the 162, yeah, the 162, yeah, Lawrence Donway. Um, so that one, yes, does run out every half an hour right now. Uh, we, as part, so uh, Mark mentioned previously that Lawrence Station is under construction, so we are a little limited as to what we can do with that bus. Well, oh, that's not fair. I mean, you're going to be giving away. At least that's what we should be. Well, that, that bus will still be maintained, yes, but it will still be running at a 30 minute service. Actually, I'm going to talk to what your concern is. For the bus going westbound, is go better than where the bus stop is now, because the, um, the under, uh, the, where the um, rear line is, that's where the bus stop is right now. It's going to be closer to Leslie with the new one, which is better. So, so I want to get back to where we're giving people an opportunity to speak. A again, afterwards, as Steve said, after we're done doing these questions, we will be staying around. If people want to talk to people specifically about specific concerns, we will stay here and we will, we will listen to the comments and questions. And yes. one more at the back here. Okay. What penalties will the bill group face if you don't meet your eight week guarantee? <laughs> We have 
we we don't have a penalty uh, built in built into the contract, and, and, and so as far as penalty, it would be construction time. But we we will not open or start another intersection until we complete the intersection. There we have. Yes. Back. So, I'm going to ask, so we were, if we could please let people ask questions. We, we are quite quiet. We let other people ask questions. I want to make sure that we give people the opportunity. Yes. First off, thanks very much for uh, taking the time to meet with us tonight. Really appreciate it. I know you guys aren't on the clock now, so it's great that you do this. Second, I know that July, August is probably the best time to do this because traffic is at least in that area. And because schools are out, people aren't working and stuff. But the problem is that Sunnybrook Park during that time hosts a lot of different programs as well as sporting activities. And the main access is from the center. And so you're going to be cutting off that access. And I bet most people who are using that this summer will have no idea that this is closed. The second point is TTC has gotten very adept at replacing their, their track beds in a couple weeks' time. So I'm very surprised and skeptical that you plan two months to do what is really 40 meters of, uh, of track bed. There must be a way of accelerating that. Uh, like, I would ask the TTC to maybe use their expertise, like watch them do it. Uh, the concrete does not take two months to cure, so there's got to be a way to do it. So I guess the first comment would be, compared to a streetcar in downtown Toronto, the trench and the size of this guideway is a whole greater scale than what you see in other locations for streetcars. And that's why we tried to demonstrate that with some of the photographs to show how deep the trench has to be, the large communication. I'm, I'm very well, I'm an engineer. Okay. Okay. I'm very important with what you guys are doing okay. here, so I think it's a great project. That's the but I know that you can put four members on 24 hours for a two-week period to get this done uh, easily. So, are there any? any other viewers? I guess we'll take one more question, and, and, and then we'll stay up here and answer. I answer the questions with that. I'd appreciate some insight on that. No response. Okay. Well, just the responses. We've gone through a, a complete construction engineering plan, and and the time frame we're taking. It is the time is the time frame that it will take to work. It, it, when you talk about 24-hour working, well, we 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 are faced with inability to do that and the disruption to the neighborhood in, in, in doing that. Uh, it is something that we could we could explore working 24 hours and see what see what we could what we could knock off of.
through Edmonton and, and Leslie. When you close that intersection off, traffic already is unbearable through Leslie and Lawrence. And you're saying that you have no way of getting police there to direct traffic? Would that be an option? So one of the one of the strategies that we do use at times is the use of pay duty officers. I've you, never seen one pay duty officer. I'm not. At I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm not saying. I, I'm not saying we've already done that at intersection. I said people raise the issue of pay duty officers. Usually, the use of pay duty officers is more tied to locations where, for example, it's difficult for pedestrians to get across the street or because of the unusual circumstances of the construction. That's more usually done at the actual construction sites that, that, that are occurring. So at a location like Leslie and Lawrence, the, the whole issue is you're talking about is there capacity, right? And does the background traffic change? To have a pay duty officer to direct traffic one way or another versus the traffic lights, I don't know that there's that much of a, of a, of a benefit. The bigger benefit is if you provide alternate routes that can take more traffic. As I said before, a challenge you have with Leslie and Lawrence is because of the construction that's been occurring at Don Mills in Eggleton and at Bayview in Eggleton, which puts more pressure on Leslie. And our position is, by having Don Mills better able to handle traffic and Bayview better able to handle traffic and putting signage up in advance morning and communicating to intercept traffic before it gets down to Leslie, that that has a better uh, potential to deal with traffic issues at Leslie and Lawrence. Does it mean that Leslie and Lawrence won't have challenges? No, it does not. But that is the strategy that we're proposing in order to deal with it. There are some other alternatives So I will tell you that has never been discussed, and there would be there would be concerns about turning those into commuter routes. Temporary summer. There's a day camp there. It's a day camp there at the bottom of that hill. Any other? Rich. It's not on. Um, there's already tra um, chaos at uh, Lawrence and Leslie, it's mainly cars. Will you consider keeping heavy trucks of Lawrence, out of Lawrence and Leslie during this time? Because that meant the traffic chaos a lot worse. Okay, so as a takeaway, we can talk to transportation services about dealing with the uh, with truck routes and truck traffic during, during the summer. So we'll take that as a takeaway. Yes. Hi. I uh, work right at Leslie and Eglinton. Earlier you said something about uh, you're still seeking the permit. Does seeking the permit and getting the permit impact starting and completing the July, August time period? Yeah, yes. We, yes. Permits need to be granted in order to proceed with the construction. They have not been issued. So if they haven't been issued, how can you be so sure you'll start on time and complete it on time? This is the schedule, this is what we proposed, and, and, and this is what we're seeking to do. I have any reason to believe that the permitting process won't go to land, we'll start on time? We, we currently work very close with the city and, and on the permit, permitting side. Uh, several of the permits that have been delayed have been broke loose on, on the, on, in this area, and we continue to work with them, and, and when we submit the application within 20 days, we generally receive a response. And, and that's, the, we, are, we are counting on the permits.
I'm sorry, I hate to bring this up again, but this is going to be your biggest nightmare of all. Right now, as the other gentleman here in the middle mentioned, at rush hour, the traffic is stopped heading up through uh, Post Road all the way to the floor, Leslie. When you take two lanes of traffic and drop them down to one, going up the hill, through the post road area, there's no lights in the post road area, so you're going to need police to guide the car and keep them moving. Because the majority of people will get over to, will want to get over to Davies that way instead of going through Yorkville or going down through Exington, through Donville. So again, Donville's gets busy. God forbid something happens on the DVD, Donville's will stop. So uh, what my fear is, and I take my husband over to Sunnybrook Hospital, is the fact that Lawrence will probably get backed out, maybe even to the TVP. I don't know if they're going to be able to get out because so many people take that route now. Everybody's going to take that route now. So again, you're probably going to have to put police in those areas where it comes down to a four-way stop. So, so you're talking about post road and that. Post road. I guess my, my earlier comment had been having a police officer, Leslie and Lawrence, wasn't really going to that's serve not, any purpose. No, no, so that's what. That's not. the question. That was what I was answering as a comment. That's that's the problem. So your comment is. So as a takeaway, the whole comment is the the traffic management strategy working with City of Toronto traffic operations for the post road area. Yes. 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 Plus, do the do the people that live on post road know what's going to happen? And, and secondly, um, will the bus, the, the westbound bus, the Lawrence bus, will the westbound bus go through Post Road? You gotta remember, all of them are stop no. signs. No. <laughs> the westbound Lawrence bus will not go through Post Road. Where will it go? The westbound Lawrence bus will go down to the return facility at Agnes Leslie's. Did it turn around? Yes. Yeah. So the Donway bus will continue to go to go through Post Road. That's today. But I, I understand not living in the area, you don't realize what it's like at Rush Hour. That's absolutely ludicrous. And less and Lawrence, a lot of a lot of people's roads. They, they come out of their roads out of their homes. Forty years of experience. So I think that's so, so we are we are aware. We are aware that there's congestion, there's been backups, and that this has been challenging for crossing. Before this, we're aware of it, and it was it was it was like that before this. Yes, thank you. And so. Our approach and what we have been working with the city on at Metrolinx and TTC is that the best way to get Leslie and Eggleton done and back to before all of this is to do this for eight weeks in the summer and get it done. Right. So that's that's the that's the approach. Get it done. But, but somehow force the traffic before it gets down to Lawrence. And so the traffic management plan is to try and intercept traffic, all right? But drivers still make their decision. But the drivers make their decision based on their own experiences. And as I said, if, and if they are encountering that kind of congestion, and meanwhile, if Don Mills Road is operating better than it has been operating, drivers will choose to take Don Mills Road. Or they will adjust their trip, or they won't make the trip, or they'll be on vacation. <laughs> or maybe all of it. Or maybe they aren't driving their kids to school because it's the summertime. All of those things. Where they drive to North York Mills. You all have to say, you have to do whatever you can to keep that traffic going. Because when you're taking all these cars down one lane, it's just they're not going to be moving. They're going to be moving. It's ridiculous. So you have to It takes an hour. Whether you keep Fox moving them or what? I have a suggestion. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're clear. Yeah. We're handing the microphone around. I have a suggestion. Why don't the people, instead of taking the going south along Eglinton, well, going south along Eglinton on buses, take the bus north and get on the subway at Fairview Mall, and take the subway along Shepherd and you just then down to the, uh, the uh, downtown. We're we're hoping we're hoping that a number of people and this is. We're out here, this has been planned for months. We're talking to the beginning of April of something that's planned for three months from now. And we're, the plan is to keep advertising this and making people aware so that they start to plan for this well in advance as opposed to being surprised. Will some people be surprised? Yes, even if you walked up and walked into their living room and explained, they still said they were surprised. 
but, but every effort will be made to communicate and make sure there's great awareness of this. Okay, everyone, this is the last question, and then the staff will be sticking around if anyone has anything further. Thank you. For all the chaos we've been through so far, what's two more months? Complete <laughs> chaos, complete power. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your questions. As I said, staff will be here. Happy to discuss. Get your input. Thank you. That's a